Welcome back. In this segment, we will be speaking with Mr. Rizvi about prototypes. What is it, and where does it fit into the invention process? Let's start with the word prototype. Uh, the word prototype is derived from a, a Greek word meaning primitive form. And that's exactly what a prototype is. A primitive form, uh, typically a first attempt at a solution by an inventor. Is a prototype required? Absolutely not. Um, there's a, often a misconception among inventors that if they have, as soon as they have a new concept, they race forward to produce a prototype. And uh, there's, there's no reason to do that. Um, I, my guess as to where this misconception may have started is that at one time the patent office required a prototype to be submitted with every patent application. Uh, but this was back in the 1800s. That requirement has long since uh, been dropped. Uh, so a prototype is, uh, is certainly not required. Okay, if a prototype is not required in order to file for a patent, why would an inventor want to go to the trouble of in producing one? In most cases, you shouldn't. Um, there's only two limited situations where a prototype may be desirable. Uh, the first one is if you want to make sure your idea works. So if your concept is something that you're, you're questioning whether it will, be, whether it will even perform, uh, that may be one reason to, to have a prototype made. Uh, the other is if, you're, if a prototype is required for someone to understand your invention. Um, but those are the only two situations where uh, you should even consider uh, producing a prototype. Considering the two scenarios above where you think a prototype might be desirable, when should the prototype be made? Well, this depends on whether or not you can make the prototype yourself. Um, if you have the ability to make the prototype yourself uh, without relying on others, uh, then it's fine to go ahead and try and make, make the prototype. If, on the other hand, uh, as, as I've seen a, a lot of inventors relying on outside experts to produce their prototype, uh, then that's one more person that needs to know about your idea. And, and there's an extreme risk uh, in following that route if you have not yet filed a patent. How so? The person that's helping you with your prototype, uh, what's to stop him from or her from filing for the patent themselves? And uh, in order for them to help you, you, you typically will end up explaining your concept to them. If they see the value in your idea, uh, they may just go forward and file. And the first person to file a patent is presumed to be the rightful inventor. And uh, anyone that wants to challenge that presumption, it becomes uh, they have the burden of proof and it's an extremely expensive and time consuming process. Can't this risk be minimized by having others sign a confidentiality, non-disclosure agreement? A confidentiality, and it's sometimes also called a non-disclosure agreement, uh, in its most basic form is a contract. And a contract only binds the parties signing. Uh, what, what typically happens in an uh, infringement situation is you have a competitor, uh, if they sign a confidentiality agreement, uh, they will rarely steal the idea themselves. What usually happens is they'll leak the idea to a third party, somebody who hasn't signed the agreement, um, and, and, and against whom you have no recourse. Well, one, one thing I want to point out, Jason, is if, if, if you have viewers that are considering an idea and they have been hesitating, uh, I, I, sometimes inventors feel that before you see a patent attorney, you need to have a invent a time machine or a you know, fountain of youth or you've got to develop a car that runs on water um, and inventors are embarrassed to see a patent attorney for something as simple as a you know a, a, a silly band or a, 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 a you know a sleeve that goes over a cup or a, the club that goes on a car steering wheel um, or some of the simpler ideas but I, I certainly encourage your viewers if they have a concept that that they feel there's a need for, they may not be alone. There may be other, uh, others out there who are also facing the same problem 
um, and most patents are not for complicated high-tech gadgets. Most patents actually cover very simple improvements over existing products, uh, but an improvement that provides a, if, it, if you believe it provides a real advantage that uh, is not covered uh, by existing products in the marketplace, um, we absolutely urge your viewers to see a patent attorney. Uh, you'll feel much better about seeing an attorney and finding out if it's patentable uh, than waiting and who knows, you may see your product on store shelves uh, a couple years down the road. Thank you, John. This concludes our segment. If you have any further questions, contact John via email. Take care and keep inventing.